guest today is Mike Boki. He's the general manager of the Capitol Exhibit Center in Fredericton, New Brunswick. There is a major discussion going on right now in that community about the future use of the grounds. Mike provides some content, details, and history as to the dynamic of the current situation and potential for the future. We're actually taking our fundraising and contributing to help them. So we, we think that's a, it's an important part of our, our, our makeup is that, that we're not just supporting our, ourselves, that we're supporting you know, other really good causes in yep. our community yep. and often those are doing the same thing and they're supporting you know you look at what you know if we have a fundraiser for the lions club or kinsmen or kiwanis club you know these service groups yep. they do tremendous and they spin off and they help you know so many other nonprofits themselves looking towards the future perfect world stuff um do you have um uh, what you would like to see happen and and maybe paint for us a vision of what that property could look like uh, 20 years from now um, well, for, for what yeah. y you would want. Yeah. We hear clearly from the city, you know, what they want to develop it as is housing, but we've never heard where, where you guys want to go. Yeah, I, I don't think our vision necessarily has to be that much different than the city's. Our vision, the difference is that, that the exhibition is there as well. But opening up, uh, you know, the idea, the concept of, you know, closing down Saunders and opening up Wilmot Street. So you've got that whole green space all the way from the Odell Park down. Um, you know, I don't understand how that couldn't happen and still be that green space behind us that's used for ultimate Frisbee or harness racing or whatever. Like the, I think those, you know, few times a year events, you know, aren't a conflict to having that open for, for the park. I think that's, that's something that's doable. It could work together. Development on the front, you know, improving the aesthetics of it. That's our goal too. I mean, we would love to have the place look something beautiful. We'd like to have a nice entrance. And and I've gone through, you know, exhibition grounds where you drive through and those those big archways and you know you've, it's something significant because you're going into the provincial exhibition grounds and you, you just know you've arrived. And, and that's what we, we would like to see. And that doesn't mean there's not something else besides Tim Hortons that still maybe does have some residential there and businesses below that it, it can be both. And if it's not the medical center in the corner, maybe it's it's whatever the city vision for it. So I don't think that that our vision to improve the look of the place, to improve the use of the place, has to be a whole lot different than the city's vision. I just don't think they're they're one and the same. Or they're, 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 they're conflicting. I think they are one and the same. They're, they want to make it better for the people that live here. And I think the intent is, although you know, we might be butting heads, but the intent for the city is to make it better for the people that live here. So we both want to accomplish the same thing. We just have different views on, on the road work that's going to take us there. And I think if the, the city's looking at that, that it's going to cost, you know, multiple millions of dollars to move the location, hmm. if they said, you know, that same amount of money or likely even less could be invested into that to make it what the city wants that still meets the, the exhibition's needs, I think that's that's the, the vision. I don't think we have a, a that big of a, of a of a conflicting goal for the facility. Are there examples where that's already been achieved? Do we have uh, a link or two you could suggest that people could go would, do their homework uh, and go look yeah, at this town, yeah. look how they did? Look I would at this say town. keep on keep 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 a track of our Facebook. It's easier to update than our website, yeah. um, but the website has some information on it. Our Facebook, you know, from this conversation, I'm going to go back and, and look at things because there are definitely municipalities where there's, you know, people, I'd like them to see what what could happen, which yeah. would be a positive thing. Um, and, and it's easy to look at the, the, the bigger the bigger centers like the C&E and, and how that's, that's developed. And you look at all the egg societies in, in, in Alberta and in Saskatchewan and how those are, you know, very commonly, yeah. you know, almost entirely, you know, a very much partnership with their municipality and running events. Like, like would, why wouldn't the city look at a partnership that would have the egg society operating the the rinks? Not that we're offering to offer three, but why wouldn't they look at it and say, well, geez, you know, we're operating with a deficit now. You know, sure, it'd be nice to have a solution that eliminated that. Maybe this is, maybe it's not, but maybe, maybe it is. Isn't it worth looking at? Yeah. You know, or, or there's a need for a swimming pool. You know, is this a location for a swimming pool? Or is this mm -hmm. an organization that could maybe operate the swimming pool so we don't have a deficit with it? Yeah. You know, those are the things that I think you need to, to look at is how to 
municipality can use this volunteer board and volunteer group to meet the needs of the community. Do you have a, a desired action? What will, what will you need to hit that target for the exhibition grounds? Do you need a thousand new people to sign up? Do you, do you need um, a call to action? I don't know, I don't know what, if there's an actual number. I think uh, that the best thing people can do is reach out and make direct conversations. I mean, knock on the door. Hey, Merry Christmas, I want to talk to you. Here's our views and we elected you to support yeah. our our needs in our community um, you know whether it's Facebook or phone calls I think this direct contact with it we do have a petition at the exhibition office that people can sign and they'll be uh, able to sign it online um, as well um, so getting your voice helping the numbers grow becoming a member of the exhibition is uh, I think it, it's always despite what's going on with the city it, it's it's always been something that's that's well worthwhile because when you're a member you, you not only get a say in in to things like the bigger bigger issues like this with the city, like it's a membership that'll actually vote on, you know, do you move or would you sell it or whatever, but but you also have the opportunity to sit on committees that might you know you might be interested in in cars and sit on. We have people sit on just the car show committee, aren't involved in the exhibition at all, yeah. and we have people that sit on the exhibition committee that aren't involved in the car show. And yeah. We have people that want to just do rib fest, yeah. so you can contribute as much of your time as you want. Or you can just say, I just want to be there to support. I want to be a, a, a vote. I want to be part that makes it a, a louder voice when you're dealing with the city. And, and But it's open to whatever whatever is driving people to, to get involved with it. Typical of any volunteer organization. Right. How right. much is it? It's it's only $20. Uh, and uh, it's basically, uh, it's to cover the costs of, of our membership. We, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, all the financials be available for it. We have an annual general meeting. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, it's it's not a lot of time. Like a membership, you know, we, we have one general annual meeting a year. Yeah, to usual. Um, yeah, so you can participate once a year or participate every week. I have a different direction, a little mm. surprise, maybe surprise, but a fun piece that crossed my desk um, just a couple days ago. So in the post that uh, our report had put up uh, as a commentary, as I see it, about um, the exhibition and the dynamic in any municipality with uh, a big piece of property and how decisions are made and, and how to have it be more proactive or productive. Um, so a um, person on Facebook sent a message, and this is the message I thought you'd enjoy. It's fun. Uh, just sent this to my relatives in the USA. They are the Odells that are part of this well-known family. They will not be pleased. And I said, goodness, it would be nice if they could contact us and so they can fill in their mm, part of the story right. from the family legacy. And so this kind person um, passed it on through Facebook and will keep you posted if, mm. if they surface and connect you with that. Because this is, it's not just about dollars and cents and legalities. It's about our community's narrative. And the mm. Odells were a big piece of, of right. Fredericton's narrative. Right. And then I think that's again, goes back to where we started talking about. There's really two questions. There's, does the city have the right to, and do they have the need to, the need to? And when you go back to the right to, when the, when you get a family that gives the land, whether it's Odell Park or the exhibition grounds, and they ask for use, for it to be used, the city at the time had the right to say no. You know, the recipient can say, sorry, we do need space, but we can't put any, you yeah. know, any conditions on it. But they didn't. They accepted the conditions, and I think they you need to honor it. You know, and as time goes by, you know, you look at the Odell Park. I think it's as valuable, more valuable today as the city has grown, yeah. and there's so many more things we could do to make that even more valuable. Just the park yeah. and the exhibition grounds. You know, similarly, they're more valuable today than they were there because of the way the our culture has changed. And I think the commitment was made that it would remain. The exhibition grounds and that needs to be be honored and you want the people you vote in to be your council and your mayor yeah. to be honorable enough to, to to honor commitments that were made from from previous yeah. and then the scary part would be well if the exhibition grounds we don't have to honor that agreement then do we have to honor the odell park agreement too yeah. I and mean, where do you, where do you stop if you start breaking these commitments where 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 do you say well we'll draw our yeah. line in the sand yeah. here there's also a narrative in Fredericton or in New Brunswick in general about preserving heritage. 
and and somehow the exhibition yeah. conversation doesn't seem to be part of the heritage conversation. Yeah, I think, and, I think, and yet its history goes back a bit right, longer than right, most right. of the. Well, part of it, I think, would have been different today if the uh, if the fire of the old exhibition palace, that was which was a beautiful. I mean, that's like the playhouse. Like that was such a structurally significant building, um, but unfortunately, you know the the. Uh, Fire protection, sprinkler systems, and everything is so much better today than it than it was. Okay. Um, had we still had that historical building, I think people are more easily yeah. to associate a structure to that heritage. But it's not. It's 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 it can be an event. You know, it it can be an organization. Yeah. You know, it can be a field, and it is. It's very much the exhibition is very much part of part of the heritage. And you think about. You know, you'd have to go back how many generations to go back to a time when there wasn't an exhibition to bring your kids to and your family to. And is how important is that? And we look at, well, times are changed and, and there has to be other events to co cover the costs of it. And you're seeing those traditions now on, on other events. Like, people don't remember when the home show wasn't there. Like, it's a very important as you start to, and you want to live in Fredericton and build in Fredericton and improve your home in Fredericton, you, you go to the home show and you, you help create what will be your next one. But those are, like, heritage starts with something, and, and you know, it, it's unfortunate that, that people, you know, more people don't associate it with the, the exhibition, but we're only nine years away from having our 200th exhibition. And that should be something we should be working on with the city, should be working on together to celebrate and with the province, because... It's a, it's, it's a huge, huge event for the provincial exhibition. Final thoughts to close this out? Well, I would certainly, I, I would like to see the city come in and, and, and ask that question, what do you need? How do we, how do we work this together? Um, is there flexibility to work together to, to make it happen? You know, I, I think before we could look at things like saying that you know, we're not going to renegotiate the lease you know in, in 11 years 14 years um, you know I think before making statements like that you need to again talk to your lawyers and find out why they've changed their opinion why you know f three years ago they were sure that the lease had to be signed what's changed today that they don't I think if uh, you want to move the exhibition you want to look at potential locations and understand what the exhibition is all about so you don't make offers like the Grand Harvey, which is just not 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 a suitable, the, at least find out what the needs are. But ideally, you know, once you determine what the needs are, it, you know, a light bulb goes off and say, well, geez, you know, those needs don't conflict with 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 our needs, and and maybe there's a way that we could work together with the city planners to come up with a you know a different vision than this maybe that 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 meets both of our needs. Thank you for this. Well, I think I think we need to we have to move forward. Now that that's impeding our 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 future, um, you know the exhibition grounds without the revenues from rentals um, are uh, you know it will put more pressure on our fundraising and our other events. Um, you know, would could maybe drive costs to go up, which is not what we want. But yeah. if the city drives you know costs to go up to cover the expenses, you know um, it, it's that, that's definitely a, a potential renting out things like the old winner's lounge to, to the wellness center um, allowing us to expand or tenants on there like William seafood to expand to close off those are all revenue generating yeah. and, and that's important and that helps keeps the gate down to what it is and, and why our, our events are so affordable to come to um, I'd like to see you know the city honor the lease so that we can maintain our buildings you know the ploy where they they wouldn't sign the the, the letter acknowledging that we we're borrowing money to, to do renovations on the building. Um, that just hurts the look of the building. Like, don't do that and then come to us and say, why well, doesn't it look better? <laughs> let us give us the ability to make it look better. Yeah. Um, if you're not giving us the financial help to make it look better, at least let us do it on our own. Don't impede our revenues and don't stop us from, from, from renovating on the ground. Thanks for this, and thanks for all the content and detail. I'm sure this conversation will continue for a while in Fredericton. Thank you for watching. Be good. Have fun. Love each other. The Dennis Report is an independent media production. To support the program, go to DennisAtchison.com and click Become My Patron on Patreon. <laughs>